Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with another review. I recently just watched the movie Jigsaw. Yes, I know it came out quite a while ago, and I probably should have done a review for it already. But I've been kind of taking my time with this one, because, to be honest here, I'm not really a Saw fan. Not really. I remember when the first one came out, and the first one's good. I remember being good. The second one I also didn't mind. The third one it was okay or alright, I remember. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen all these. Four, I, I remember not being too good. Five, I remember being terrible. Six, well, I remember being a little bit returned to form with six. I remember it being at least decent. Seven, I remember sucking bad. Uh, this one, this one is lame. This Saw movie is lame. It's just called Jigsaw. I expected better from this movie. The trailer looked pretty interesting. This is pretty much kind of a standalone Saw movie. It does have some callbacks to the other films, but you can really watch this one all by itself without having having seen the other films. I think that's what the filmmakers were going for. This is a bad movie. I'd give it a half a star. One to four stars, I'd give it a half a star. It's a very lame film. Um, pretty much got this cop in the movie named Halloran or whatever, and he wants to... Sorry about that light right there in the background. But anyway, you got the, the Jigsaw murders that are happening again. They think it might be John Kramer. You got these people who are in like this farmhouse or whatever who were uh spoiler alert later on in the film you find out is actually taking place in the past and john's testing them and of course they had to fit uh tobin bell into this film somehow he does a good job when he shows up all these people are getting tested it's supposed to be like jigsaw's first test yet his traps are pretty advanced much more advanced than it showed in the flashbacks of what was supposed to be his first tests in the other films He's got all these people in there and they got to confess their sins or whatever and most of the traps are extremely not even that hard to overcome at least the first couple aren't like these people have buckets on their heads and they're getting pulled by the chains attached to their necks into this these buzz saws and any kind of blood will stop the uh, saws from going so they just like put their elbows up at them that's all you got to do basically or just hold a finger up to it and just like one prick of blood any blood amount will stop the thing from going it just seems really easy to get by that trap. There's all this movie's also not really gory. It feels like it was really toned down from the other Saw films. This movie could, like, seriously almost pass for PG-13. Um, there's some cool action when the film starts out, like a police chase of a criminal, which was kind of neat. Um, there's these two people who are working in the coroner's office or whatever, and you find out, spoiler alert, later on, one of them is supposedly the real first Jigsaw apprentice, that this was the real original guy who came back from the military, and that he was in the, he's, come to find out, I did like this little twist, that he is the one that misdiagnosed Tobin Bell's x-rays and caused him to die of his cancer, and he was actually in one of the, he was one of the people that was in the first trap, uh, of the buzz saws or whatever, having to give a, pound of blood or pound of blood or whatever and uh <clears throat> he got hit in the back by the saws and for some reason john chose to save him because the guy says that john didn't think that um his crime of misdiagnosing something accident was worthy of dying for and the dude never got retested again after he got hit in the back and he just got healed up by john and then john just decided to take him on as an apprentice just randomly that's retarded but <laughs> anyway uh, it's also stupid that this guy's supposedly like the main first apprentice and he's he supposedly helped John create his first couple of uh, things, uh, traps, and then the dude just like disappeared. Uh, can we say retcon? <laughs> this whole movie feels like a retcon. It feels like what they're trying to do or we're hoping to do with this film. I don't know if it's going to happen, but what they're hoping to do from the look of the film and the feel of the film and the story is that they're hoping to just make this a standalone film and create like a new franchise new series with this dude as the new jigsaw but the guy just does not have the moxie i like costas mangalord or however you say his name who played hoffman better than this dude and he was pretty much just a serial killer cop later on in the series he didn't really have any real motive really later on uh this dude is just motive is just kind of lame like he wants to he's basically setting up all these traps so he can capture this dirty cop who has caused a bunch of criminals to walk and everything in the past but he, he's really out for him because he has a personal vendetta against him because he blames him for his wife's death uh the dude basically kept a criminal out of prison so he could use him uh so he could use him for uh to be an informant and uh the dude was a murderer who went on and killed uh the the, uh, the guy's wife who turns out to be jigsaw um, so he blames the cop for that, but really, that's just kind of police procedural. I mean, wouldn't somebody who really cared about justice want the cops to use this guy to help catch other criminals? Wouldn't that, shouldn't that be the right way to use the dude to catch a 
to catch bigger fish to put more deadly criminals behind bars? Shouldn't that be the right way it works? So really, he's kind of punishing him for, <laughs> the dude is an asshole. He does deserve to have his ass kicked, the cop is. But this is the one thing that it doesn't seem like he should be really guilty of or super punished for or whatever. I don't know. It just doesn't seem, just seems like that's kind of how cops always do things. That seems like a noble thing to do. I mean, to allow that to be done to catch other worser criminals. It's something you have to do. But anyway. Uh, the movie just feels too PG-13. I do like the twist at the end. You find out the big farm test with all these people has actually happened in the past. Um, the suspects and the mystery of who is Jigsaw, because we know Jigsaw's dead, uh, it's okay, but at the end it becomes perfectly 100% clear that the coroner dude is going to be Jigsaw, the new Jigsaw. It just becomes too obvious at the end, because at the end him and the cop are in this trap together, and they got these lasers that are like folding in on their face, and it's going to slice their heads off or apart. Which is kind of cool. Um, and the cop confesses all the wrong things he's done. And the other guy, <clears throat> you thought he was dead, the coroner dude. But he gets up and you find out he's actually the Jigsaw dude. And they, were, they did this already in one other Saw film. I think it was Saw 4 with the Costas Mangalore dude or whatever, Hoffman. And uh, he turned out to be Jigsaw where they had a trap with him in it. And he just got up and walked out. And you find out he was the, he was the Jigsaw apprentice in that film. And just the idea of Jigsaw having yet another apprentice is just really stupid. It's just become stretched out to death at this point. There's, it's just ridiculous. The big problem I've always had with the Saw films is that they treat themselves so seriously, yet they're so over the top in their, their traps and their gore, and just their plots are just so friggin' ridiculous at this point. It's like they're, just, they're too high up in their own asses in terms of how serious they try to take themselves when they clearly have such ridiculously stupid plots at this point. <laughs> And then there's just total flaws in John's logic, like the character's Jigsaw's logic. Like at the end of the movie, uh, the past part or whatever, where the two people are in a trap, he tells them their salvation is inside the gun or inside or whatever, or is here or whatever. And they take the gun and the woman tries to shoot the other dude and um, it comes out the other end and shoots her and kills her. And then the, the, the other dude crawls over there and he picks up the uh, gun and you find out the key to their traps were actually inside the bullet. And I'm like, well, how is how is that fair? That's not. Some of these traps are not really testing so much. How, do you, how much do you care to live? They're more like Riddler puzzle pieces that half the shit normal person can even figure out. That has nothing to do with your will to live. That's how fucking smart you are. <laughs> the logic is flawed in in these films as is and has been since the beginning. But they were at least entertaining enough to make up for any kind of gripes like that. Um, at least some of the good ones were. This one doesn't truly have that. When it's the people at the farmhouse, it kind of does, and it is entertaining to see, and it's not so bad. But once it gets towards the end, when it focuses more on like bringing the, everything together, I was just like, man, this twist is friggin' lame. Because this coroner dude, he tries to act, he does, he's not horrible acting, he's like, okay. But when you find out he's the new Jigsaw Apprentice or whatever, or the new killer, you're like, fuck, that's lame. I would have rather them just brought John back as a zombie. And just go crazy with it, because this shit's, this is lame. I wouldn't want to see a sequel to this dude. Don't even bother, in my opinion. But, uh, unless you can, like, pull out, like, a, a, an amazing script with this guy for the next movie, this sucks. Um, but, yeah, and at the end of it, the cop dude is trapped in a trap. And the corner dude doesn't even really give him a chance or a way to get out, really. He just kind of has the dude trapped. And the laser is just like closing on the dude's face and slice it apart and it folds open like a banana. And it's just CGI and it looks silly compared to the practical gore they had in the film. It looks way too computer generated. I didn't like it at all. Um, and it's like you can tell the dude, the coroner guy, just really did all this just so he could catch this cop and get his revenge on him. That's really all it was. And he just did the jigsaw stuff and mimicked it so he <laughs> could get away with it. Trying to make it look like Halloran, the cop, uh, was the actual apprentice or whatever, a copycat. It was really just a trick to get this one cop. It's more of a personal vendetta thing than anything. But, yeah, all in all, Jigsaw sucks. And I like the Spurg Brothers. I didn't mind Daybreakers. It wasn't great, but I, and I enjoyed it. And I really liked Predestination. I thought that was awesome. That's been their best film so far. They should probably stick to sci-fi because that seems to be their wheelhouse. This film just sucks. This should have been way better. Uh, this is just a lame entry in an overlong franchise that probably should have ended around... 
like a fifth or a sixth movie. Uh, all in all, this is a half a star film. I do not like this film, and I don't recommend it, and I'll never watch it again. Even for even if you're a Saw fan, this film is just lame to me. And I, I don't like Saw. I'm not a big fan. But I have enjoyed some of the earlier films. I didn't really hate them. They just got stupider and stupider as they went along like all franchises do. But the problem with this one is it kept taking itself super seriously. But, uh... As is, it's just a lame movie. I'd give it a half a star from one to four. So I'll see you guys again with the next review.